Hi, this is Dion from uh, FocusChemistry.com. Today, I'm going to talk about a particular question uh, that was from the A-Levels in 2008, a multiple choice question. Uh, this question has been asked quite a few times on the forums, and the solutions that was offered by anonymous people um, have not been very satisfactory. So today, we're going to address this issue about this very, very simple question. But to many students, they can't do it because it doesn't seem to fit into any chapters in their syllabus. So let's take a look at this question, the MCQ question. Uh, it talks about this person called Lord Raleigh. Another Lord, Ra Lord Raleigh, a little background about himself. Uh, he came up with this concept called Raleigh scattering, which is the same, which is the idea of why the sky is blue. It was described by his concept called scattering effect. Right? This guy, Lord Raleigh, right, he tried to make atmospheric nitrogen by removing three, three components from air. So let me draw out what he's talking about in a simple pictorial form. If this is his sample of air that he took out from air, Right? Now, that contains, of course, it contains nitrogen, right? And it contains other impurities like carbon dioxide, water vapor. I'm going to use H2O gas to express water vapor and oxygen. So, what he does try to do, right, is that he tries to take a sample of air and he removes this tree from this sample and hopefully he can get pure nitrogen. That's what he's trying to do, right? So, he found that this density, right, the density that he got so far, the density, of his atmospheric nitrogen, right, is found to be this number, which I'm going to run a bot here, 1.2572 grams per dm cube. And this density is measured at STP. STP stands for standard temperature and pressure. I'm sure you know what it is. But it found that this particular density, right, is quite different or is different from the density of real pure nitrogen. So if you have real pure nitrogen, which is, I'm going to draw this again, Nitrogen, this is pure, right? The density of pure nitrogen is found to be different. And the number I'm already on the board is 1.2505 grams per dm cube. Again, expressed at STP. Okay? So you notice pure nitrogen and his so called atmospheric nitrogen, there is a difference in the density, telling you that something else must be found inside here which means that he managed to remove most of the impurities, except there's one underlying impurity that's still found inside here, and that makes the difference between his atmospheric nitrogen and really pure nitrogen. The question asks the students to find out which is the impurity inside this mixture. So we're going to call this impurity IMP. So our so-called atmospheric nitrogen contains two things, pure nitrogen and impurity, whereas pure nitrogen only contains nitrogen. Now how do we do this question? How do we find out whether what this impurity is? Now, to answer this question, right, uh, the concept we're going to use is very similar to a concept we learned before in the earlier chapters in first year. Now, recall you actually did this before in first year. If there are two different isotopes of chlorine, chlorine comes in different isotopes. Two of the most common isotopes is 35 chlorine and 37 chlorine. You probably have heard this story before. If the ratio or the abundance ratio between 35 and 37 chlorine is 3 to 1, then you ask students, you know, the question is how to find the relative atomic mass of chlorine. Now the technique we used to, use, used to learn from school is that we take this abundance, which is 3, multiply by the mass number of chlorine 35 plus 1 times the mass number of chlorine 37, sorry, chlorine 37, and we divide it by the total abundance, right? And the answer turns out to be 35.5, which is what we see in our data booklet today. If you were to look at this method, Okay, now this relative atomic mass basically is the same as this concept called average mass. What I'm trying to say is that if there's a mixture of two different gases, one is chlorine 35, one is chlorine 37, and basically the ratios is 3 to 1 in terms of moles, molar ratio, then what we're trying to find out here is what's the average mass of this mixture. Now this technique, right, is very simple. If I were to re rewrite it in this manner, I can rewrite this equation in this manner. I'll put this 4 under the first term, and this is 1 quarter under the second term. You'll find that these two fractions are the mole fractions of these two gases in this mixture. And therefore, the average, therefore the conclusion is this, the average property of a mixture is equal to the sum of the individual mole fraction, this individual mole fraction, times its property, the property of the pure 
pure uh, component called property i. And we sum this from i equals to 1, which is the first component, till the nth component. So basically, there are two components here, 35 chlorine, 37 chlorine. We add up, see the add up here, the adding, we add up. The mole fraction of the 35 chlorine, 35 chlorine times the 35 chlorine's mass, plus the mole fraction of the 37 chlorine times the 37's mass, add these two up together, that gives me my average mass. And we're going to approach this question in a very similar way, because if you notice, it's impure nitrogen. Is this atmospheric nitrogen is basically a mixture. There are two components in here, right? Same as this particular question. So we're going to approach this in the same way. This, this is pure nitrogen, and this is going to be a mixture. We're going to call this a mixture. And we're going to see whether how this number is related to this number, where this is the mixture density, this is the density of the pure nitrogen. All right? We're going to write an equation relating these two numbers now. Let me erase off the bottom. Now, using the equation that I used just now, the property of the mixture, now this is the density of the mixture, 1.2572, this is the density of the mixture, is equals to the sum of the fractions between these two, the fractions of these two components, the nitrogen and the impurity. So I'm going to call x n2 as the mole fraction of nitrogen times the density of pure nitrogen, which incidentally is given in this question as 1.2505, the density of pure nitrogen, plus the mole fraction of the impurity times the density of the impurity. You notice that this is not given, these two numbers are not given, so is in this number, right? We also know the other thing is this. It's that the mole fraction of nitrogen plus the mole fraction of the impurity must be equal to 1, right? The sum of fractions equals to 1. So these two is related by another equation, which is this equation, right? How are we going to find out what the density of the impurity is? Now, you think about it this way. Mole fraction is a number, right, that is between 0 and 1, right? This is a fraction, right? Fraction ranges from 0 to 1, mole fraction. So, if this number, x value, the maximum number you can take is 1. Assuming that this number is 1, then this number will be 0, which means the second component is gone from this equation. You know, even this is even everything is nitrogen. There is no way this number is going to be equal to this number. You still see that this dens density of the mixture is still bigger than this density of pure nitrogen, which means that the second term, this term, contributes significantly to the overall number, right? Because even if this number is the biggest, right? There's no way these two numbers can be the same, right? Meaning to tell, meaning to say that this second term contributes significantly to this overall term. The sum of these two gives you this number. Now, the other thing is this. If this number contributes significantly to the overall density, the next thing is this. Since impurity is present in small amounts, then we can say this. The density of the impurity, right, is very small. No, not the density, sorry. The mole fraction of the impurity is very, very small, right? And the mole fraction of nitrogen is almost equal to 1. This number is a very big number, the mole fraction of nitrogen, the mole fraction of impurity is going to be very small. Why so? Because it's an impurity. The amount is going to be present, it's going to be very insignificant. Now, if this second term is supposed to contribute significantly to this overall term, and the mole fraction of the impurity is going to be very small, our conclusion is this, that it's going to be the impurity's density that's going to be the main thing, the main component, that's going to make this term contribute significantly to this term. Which means my density of the impurity is going to be very, very big. It's going to be a very big number. A very small number multiplied by a very big number can contribute significantly to this. Can you imagine if the density of the impurity is going to be very small? Then there's no significant contribution of the second term at all, right? So that's why this number is going to be big. Now, how big? It's going to be bigger than the density of nitrogen. This is our main conclusion, important conclusion, and that is this number has to be bigger than this number so that this number can contribute significantly to the mixture. Why so? Because this number, the x, x impurity, is going to be very, very small. All right. So this is the first conclusion that will lead us to the answer. So we need to find out what will happen if the density of the impurity is bigger than the density of nitrogen. Let's take a look. If I come over here, <coughs> we're going to compare densities now. All right. The question says about STP conditions. 
So STP, which is where the temperature is 0 degrees and the pressure is 1 atm. This is the condition, these are the conditions for STP. All right. I'm going to write the ideal gas equation for the nitrogen. I'm going to write ideal gas law for the impurity because both are gases and therefore I can write the same thing for them. I notice that both densities are expressed at the same temperatures and pressure. Now from the ideal gas law, I can express, I can bring out density by expressing moles in terms of mass over MR. Mass over the molecular weight times RT equals to pressure times volume. So what happens is, you want to bring in density, mass over volume, right? Mass over volume, the mass is on the right, volume is on the left, I bring the volume to the right, I get mass over volume, which is the density of nitrogen, okay, equals to the P times MR over RT of nitrogen, right? This is the equation for the density of nitrogen. If you do the same thing for the impurity, I'm going to write it in the same manner for the impurity, density of the impurity is mass of the impurity per volume, which is the pressure of the impurity times MR of the impurity over RT. This equation is for the impurity, right? Now we notice that for these two equations, right, these two equations, the temperature and the pressures are the same because the densities are measured at the same temperature and pressure. So the PT values are the same on both sides. The R is a gas constant, which is a constant on both sides. Now if we say that the density of the impurity must be bigger than density of nitrogen, right, which is this term must be bigger than this term, this term must be bigger than this term, since the PRT are the same values on both sides, our conclusion is that the MR of the impurity, the molecular weight of impurity, must be bigger than the impurities, than the nitrogens and MR values. Let me repeat it again. If the density of the impurity is supposed to be bigger than the density of the nitrogen, and the PRT values are the same for both sides, the conclusion is that the MR of the impurity has to be bigger than the MR of nitrogen. And this is our fundamental concept, the conclusion we must have to come up with the answer. So we're going to look at the MR of the impurity compared with the MR of nitrogen. Now from the data booklet, right, the periodic table, we know that nitrogen's MR is 28 because N is 14, there are two of it, it gives you 28. We go through the periodic table, you find that argon's MR is 40, helium's MR is 4, methane is CH4, its MR is 16, and neon's MR is only 20. And therefore, the only gas whose MR is bigger than nitrogen's MR is argon. And that is how we get argon as the answer. All right? And that's all for this question. It's a very simple concept. It's just that it's not taught in any specific chapter. And that's how we solve this, by using this technique. The same technique is how we solve the relative atomic mass. That's all from me today. I'm Dion again from FocusChemistry.com. Come and visit our website and see you again. Goodbye.